Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about a Laplace transform of a periodic function. And before we uh, get into that, let me just kind of um, remind you of a couple of things. Now, when we talk about a periodic function, I would guess that all of you are thinking about maybe a sine or a cosine. And that in fact is uh, true, that if I consider the function f of t equal to the sine of t, I can say that that is periodic. Um, with, and in a, in a trig class, we say that this has got a period of 2 pi, because every 2 pi this graph will repeat. And what we will, what we will use here is the fact that f of t plus 2 pi is the same thing as the sine of t plus 2 pi, which of course, due to the fact that it is periodic, is the sine of t, which means that that is f of t. So if, uh, a period, if a function has got some period, then what I know is that f of t plus the period is going to end up being f of t. So in general, Um, if a function has a period of t, if f of t has a period of capital T, then f of lowercase t plus uppercase t is going to be equal to f of t. But I could also say that, you know, f of t plus 2t would be equal to f of t, that if I had made this a 4 pi, then the same thing would have been true. And in fact, in general, what I can say is that f of t plus k capital T is going to end up being equal to f of t, where k is an integer. Now, um, there's nothing about this that is different than uh, what you learned in trig. It's just we're kind of adding to the idea a little bit. So f of t plus k times capital T is going to end up being equal to f of t. All right, so now we are looking to do the Laplace transform of a periodic function. And uh, let me also say the kinds of things that I might be interested in. What if I had a function f of t that the picture looked like uh, this. Let's say that we went from one to two to three to four and went up to one and that this ended up looking like this. And then I'll say that it goes on like that forever. So I've got kind of a sawtooth pattern where this is piecewise continuous. Um, but it's periodic and goes on forever. If I tried to use the definition of the Laplace transform, I would have to integrate this function from zero to one, and then a different function from one to two, and then a different function from two to three, and a different function from three to four, and so on. That would quite literally take an infinite amount of time because there is an infinite amount of pieces. But what we will look at here is that in this function, t is 2 because every two units this thing ends up um, repeating itself. And so this is the type of thing that I want to be able to take the Laplace transform of. All right, so then let's start with what the formula, what the, what the result is going to end up being. So if t is, uh, if f of t is periodic, with period, capital T, then the Laplace transform of f of t is going to be 1 divided by 1 minus e to the negative s times capital T times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative st f of t dt. That is one crazy Laplace transform. Um, before we get into this and, and like why the Laplace transform looks like this will become pretty obvious when we start looking at the proof. 
I would ask you to recognize that the integral looks just like the integral for the Laplace transform, except it's going up to pos uh, capital T instead of going up to um, instead of going up to positive infinity. And then I've got this interval or this uh, uh, factor out in front, one over one minus e to the negative st. We will see where that comes up as we start to go through the uh, as we start to go through the proof. Okay, so uh, proof. will be, we will start with, we're looking at the Laplace transform of f of t. And as most of the proofs start, I'm gonna go back to the definition of the Laplace transform. So e to the negative st times f of t dt. Okay, so I want you to recall that f of t is periodic, right? And so it has a period of t. So maybe the function looks like that. And then when it, we go up to 2t, it's going to look exactly the same thing and go between 2t and 3t and so on. So what I wanna do is look at the integral going over each one of these pieces. And so I will set it up in the following way. I want you to notice that I'm leaving a bunch of space after the equal sign. I am going to integrate from k capital T up to k plus one T, k plus one capital T, e to the negative st f of t dt. So what I'm doing here is integrating over the kth period. And then I want to add up all of those um, all of those sums, or uh, sorry, all of those integrals. So I'm going to put a sum out in front of this, where I'm going to let k go from zero up to positive infinity. So notice when k is equal to zero, I'm going to be integrating from zero up to t. That's going to be this first interval here. When k is equal to one, I'm gonna be integrating from t up to two t, so that's gonna be the second interval. And then when k is equal to three and four and so on, I will, that's where I will get all of, those, um, all of those integrals added up, so it does end up being the, that, original, um, that original big integral. Uh, because I've done this before, I know what to do next. I'm going to do a u substitution, and I'm going to let u equal t minus k times capital T. Um, not obvious why I am doing that until you see what I end up with. So let's just follow through what this would look like. Uh, du would be equal to dt. And then also, uh, if u is equal to t minus kt, then lowercase t is going to be equal to u plus kt. And just so you can kind of see where this is going, that is that thing that I referred to earlier about periodic functions. So uh, what happens with my, um, with my uh, integral? The sum does not change. So this is the sum as k goes from zero up to infinity. I have an integral. If u is equal to t minus kt, then when t is equal to kt, I'm gonna put that there and I would get u is equal to kt minus kt, so my lower limit becomes zero. Um, k plus one t put into the u substitution is gonna be kt plus t minus kt, so that will be going up to t. Then I will have e to the negative s times t, which is u plus k capital T, times f of t, which is u plus kt, all times du. Um, that's a lot. All right, so next, the fact that this is periodic means that f of u plus kt is equal to f of u. And then I'm going to just kind of expand out this uh, exponent um, the exponent of the e to the x. So let's just rewrite what we've got. Sum as k goes from zero up to infinity of the integral from zero to t, um, e to the negative su times e to the negative k uh, st, I'll put that in the correct order, s, k, capital T, 
f of u du. And if you start keeping an eye on where we are going, uh, what the formula looks like, you can begin to see it take shape. This integral is in terms of u, which means that this middle factor here is a constant, so I could take it outside of the integral. So this would be the sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity of e, and I'm going to write it as negative s t um, to the k times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative su f of u du. And I, uh, it's not obvious why I wrote this e to the negative st to the k, but that's going to end up being the next step. What you should just make sure is that, that this is the same thing as that factor that I moved out. I just brought out that, uh, brought out that exponent. Okay, so now you can see that my integral is correct. It's in terms of u instead of in terms of t, but that's not going to be that big of a deal. Then what I would ask you to recognize is that this right here is a geometric sequence or a geometric series. Geometric geometric series. And what do we know about geometric series? We know that if you have the sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity of a times r to the k where r, an absolute value, is less than 1, then that series will converge to a divided by 1 minus r. So the series has to start at 0, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1, and it will converge to this sum. Um, in my case here, a is 1, and notice that e to the negative st is going to be equal to 1 over e to the st. And we already said that s is positive, And then t is going to be some distance on the x-axis. So this is definitely going to end up being less than 1, which means that this series is going to converge. So what I will get then, if I evaluate this sum, that will become 1 divided by 1 minus r r was e to the negative s capital T times the integral from 0 up to t. And now I'll put just put things back in terms of lowercase t, e to the negative st f of t dt, right? u was just a placeholder, and I'm just going to end up changing that variable. So this becomes the Laplace transform of f of t, where t is periodic.